So here we are in the famous Carlton Hotel Terrace at the Cannes Film Festival, the uh, 68th year of what is really the granddaddy of all film festivals, kind of a United Nations of movie making, if you will. And uh, this year, the, the festival is dominated by movies from France and Italy, with uh, only four notable titles from Hollywood. There's a Woody Allen psychodrama called Irrational Man. I haven't been able to perform in nearly a year. A Gus Van Sant suicide tale, The Sea of Trees, with last year's Oscar winner Matthew McConaughey. One more Mad Max without Mel Gibson. And one more Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've been waiting for you. Only four, though, from Hollywood. While there are literally dozens of films from Italy, France, and even Switzerland on display. But you know, it didn't used to be that way. And to prove the point, let's look back at the days when Cannes was called Beverly Hills, France, or Hollywood on the French Riviera. You know, for the past 32 years, movie makers and movie stars from all over the world have been coming to this half-mile stretch of beach on the French Riviera every May, almost like an annual rite of spring, because this particular beach is the Mediterranean coastal playground called Cannes home of the world's oldest and largest movie marketplace, the Cannes Film Festival. That's the uh, look of the French Riviera from a boat at sea in the Mediterranean Sea. You know, I've been covering this circus called the Cannes Film Festival for five years now, and I have to tell you that every year, just the idea of being able to come here to this part of the world and get paid for it always reminds me of um, how magical the words French Riviera and the south of France sounded to me the very first time I ever heard them. A few years ago when I was about 17 years old and um, living in a place called Columbus, Ohio. I mean the glamorous and truly exotic images that I could conjure just by hearing those words um, were really incredible. And I must say that this part of the world still lives up to all of those boyhood images. The funny thing is, most of the people who come to the Cannes Film Festival never get a chance to see what this part of the world is really like. Because the Cannes Film Festival is definitely not what the south of France is really like by any means. Here in Cannes, you really do get a sense of just how universal the need for selling is to any movie project in the world as filmmakers and film peddlers from every nation under the sun gather at what is essentially a, a kind of sales convention or bartering bazaar. Cannes may be famous for its topless beaches, but the film festival is famous for its bottomless well of attention-getting techniques. Liza Minnelli's surprise visit will be remembered as a frustration to the press since Liza dodged cameramen at every turn and spent most of her time in hiding. But Liza wasn't hiding her excitement about being in Cannes any more than I was. No, but it's wonderful for you because I, I you know, I'm in, I'm in this business, supposedly, you know, mm -hmm. whatever this business is supposed to be. Show business. And I watch you. So for you to say that you're excited, I'm is very important. But were you hesitant about coming here and uh, subjecting yourself to whatever your I don't feel like I'm subjecting myself. Everybody keeps saying, you know, you're, you're going to be in for it. Oh, boy, you're going to be sorry. I, and, and then you're here, and, and I don't think of it as a hype. There's so many photographers around. I, 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 too many. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, they just, once they see someone walking on the beach, they don't even know who they're photographing. And, just, and they come around from everywhere. They said, would you sit on the beach? I said, sit on the beach? Okay, I'll sit on the beach. And then they said, would you pull your dress up a little higher? I said, no, 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 I'm just leaving here. That's the end of this photo session. I've always felt that an actor owed the studio or the producer, uh, uh, he owed him some effort. You know, how far depends on that. For example, if they asked me to be here, you know, in this kind of confusion for a week, I'd say no. <laughs> if they say the price is too high, if they say, would I come down here for uh, maybe a day and a half? Yes. Alfred Hitchcock was an artist. It's curious to me, why would you lend your name and your own credibility and stature to a tribute to Alfred Hitchcock, a man who devoted his entire career to violence, bloodshed, mutilation? I think uh, Alfred Hitchcock's uh, genre 
was suspense. This is not a doggy in the window. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, this too happens at Cannes. People come through revolving doors, and you never... In fact, here he is now. Oops! Oh, <laughs> I don't want you to fall down those steps, kind sir. Would you Thank come this you way with me before, because I know you need a... Ah, uh, yes, he's got the... <laughs> this is... I see, that's very nice. Um, I don't quite recognize you because of the, the, uh, the, the face. What happened to the... Are you trying to hide? No, I would No, David, I wouldn't try... Oh, this! Yes. No, I, um... Your countenance. I... I had a... Uh, I don't know, I've been getting this all over my body recently. There's a lot of hair. Hair? Yes, and, um... I, see. I think it's probably just burgeoning virility, you know, that I just can't keep in any longer. There's no virility quite like burgeoning virility, as a matter Burgeoning of fact. virility is probably... <sighs> so that's what Bo Derek does, huh? Bo Derek does affect some people that makes them burgeon. Bo, Bo, I think, does bring out a lot of burgeoning uh, in a lot of people. Yeah, she's, well, she's a lovely, she's a lovely girl. Lovely girl. And that lovely girl does seem to haunt Dudley Moore wherever he goes, whether he's wearing a beard or not. At Cannes, Dudley was getting the usual what's Bo Derek really like questions when all he wanted to do was tell the world about his new movie called Holy Moses, which no one in Europe had ever heard of. So Dudley decided to rehearse his pitch with me, or try to. It's, uh, it's about a, a man called Herschel. It's the lost book of the Old Testament. The lost uh, book? The, a lost, well, let's say have, a lost book of the Old Testament. Have they ever found it? The, the book of Herschel. No, they haven't. Oh. And I was, I've never found it. And frankly, it's hurting. Well, how did they do the adaptation if they never found this lost book of the Old Testament? This is a fictitious idea, uh, David. You all... made it up? Yes, it was made up, you see. You people in Hollywood do that all the time. Yes, it's, well, you know, glamour, lights, women. I know, drugs, sometimes I'm sick of it. I don't know. Food, this. Chateaubriand. Yes. Chateaubriand? Pardon? <laughs> Chateau all over the carpet, 1962. is a delicious vintage. Um, I see. Hello, hmm. sailor. Holy Moses is a fiction, then. It's not true, huh? No, no. Holy Moses <laughs> is is basically about a um, man who thinks he's he was uh, he he's yay he's been chosen to uh, lead <laughs> God's people out of Egypt. Whose uh, people? God, God, God's pe people. Oh, God. God's chosen people. Uh. Now you're getting the idea. And of course, this leads to a variety of hilarious <laughs> situations, which of course. I am the God of Abraham. I am. I, I, I had to hear him a few more times before I got him down pat. It's your Old Testament comedy. You know, there have been many of these. Oh, your basic Old Testament comedy. Cary, <laughs> Cary Grant has done, well, five or six <laughs> Old Testament comedies, and I'm just following in his footsteps, really. <laughs> and, of course, we're doing a musical version of it. Um, Carly, um, no, we're not. Holy music. We're going to call it after that. A musical version of the Old Testament? <laughs> yes, why not? I mean, God, it's about time, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, you got me there with, with that. The, uh, yes, Old yes. Testament comedy. I'll you everywhere if I had a chance, David. <laughs> I knew you would. Oh, well. <clears throat> yes, goodbye and good night, yes. and God bless you. Who, me? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. have to fly. <laughs> so all that jazz has made it to the French Riviera, and um, it really is surprising for me to learn that this is actually your first trip to the Cannes Film Festival, a, a man of your uh, mm, esteemed background in the world of cinema, <laughs> with films like uh, Cabaret, and, and Lenny was even a, a big contender in the festival one year. I would have thought that um, you might have been here before, but um, you're, you haven't. I wanted to come in 75 when Lenny was here. And as, I don't know if you remember, but Valerie Perrine won a prize that year. But um, I, that was the year I was sick and I was in the hospital when it happened. So I would get daily reports from here, but this is my first visit. That's right. That was a year you were um, actually living the story that became the story for all that jazz, right? Well, part of it, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Despite the decidedly international flavor of the Cannes Film Festival, the entire spectacle is becoming more and more dominated by American movies. And that, I think, is just one more indication that film as an art form and as a business is defined by an American perspective the world over. And as the workmen begin to clean up the streets of Cannes at the festival's end, most of the billboards are for American movies, and most of the debris was left behind by American movie makers. Cannes will remain on the French Riviera, but the compelling force in world cinema will return to Hollywood. Well, whether Hollywood has a diminished presence or not, the uh, Cannes Film Festival is always a wild and wonderful circus to behold. 
and also a great excuse to go to the French Riviera. I mean, I wouldn't want to live here, but it sure is a nice place to visit. David Sheehan saying au revoir, arrivederci, and ciao from Cannes.